cosmologists say the universe is filled with black holes, big and small. But the evidence for them is not conclusive. Even if there's nine out of 10 pieces of evidence for black holes, there's still one piece of evidence left. That can open it up to the possibility that maybe black holes don't exist. Experts instead look to the theoretical science of how black holes work. They're thought to have the super dense collapsed core of a star at their center. Around this is a sphere known as the event horizon, a place where the rules of physics go out the window. The event horizon in many ways cuts a black hole off from the rest of the universe. Whatever comes in can never come back out. It's almost like an invisible line in space. It's not until you try to turn around and leave that you realize you're never gonna escape. It's Einstein's theory of general relativity that tells us nothing can leave a black hole. This set of rules governs the giant structures of the universe, galaxies, star systems, and planets. General relativity is Einstein's theory of gravity. It is the all-encompassing theory that describes everything we know about gravity and how the universe on large scales functions. But the universe functions on small scales too. Everything in the universe, including us, is made up of tiny bits of matter. These are governed by another set of rules known as quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics allows you to understand at the smallest levels, at the smallest scales of what builds our universe. Weird stuff happens in the quantum world. It's, it's, it, it defies all intuition. And one of the weird things that can happen is you can have the empty space of a vacuum creating particles. In the quantum world, tiny particles can pop spontaneously into existence. They're drawn to each other like magnets. But when they collide, they annihilate each other. So you've got two particles, they can pop out of the vacuum and they annihilate very quickly. That doesn't break any laws. Now in the vicinity of a black hole though, things get kind of complicated. Gravity is usually too weak to affect the particles in the quantum world. But British physicist Stephen Hawking theorized that at the event horizon of a black hole, the normal rules don't apply. And what Stephen Hawking realized is that if you have a pair of particles that pop up at the edge of a black hole and one gets sucked into the black hole, then the other is forced to become a real particle in our universe. In order to do so, it takes energy from the black hole and in that mechanism, black holes very slowly over time lose mass. With Hawking's work, we see that the black hole will eventually evaporate, and that's a com that was a complete shift in how to think about black holes. According to Hawking, when black holes aren't eating material, they actually shrink by emitting thermal radiation, or heat. In this process, a black hole will eventually evaporate completely, and this creates a problem for scientists. Everything in the universe, from atoms to planets to spacecrafts, carry information about what they're made of, how fast they're going, and where they've been. The laws of physics state that this information can't be lost from the universe, and that should apply to black holes. So, if an object passes through the event horizon of a black hole, all the information about that object becomes part of the black hole itself. Once they've fallen in, all you can see is a heavier black hole, 
and you don't know what fell in if you didn't, weren't watching it. Well, that doesn't violate the, the laws of physics, but if the black hole continues to evaporate and evaporate and evaporate with thermal radiation and then disappear, then all you have afterwards is thermal radiation. You have no information, even in principle, about what fell in. And that information is precisely what quantum mechanics says can't be lost. The thermal radiation coming out of the black hole contains no information. It's a blank slate. If this continues until the black hole evaporates, then all the information is completely lost when the black hole disappears. If that information disappears, then the laws of quantum mechanics are violated. And we don't know how to solve that paradox yet. We're trying to combine quantum mechanics and relativity. And the first time we were able to do it leads to this giant mess that calls into question fundamental assumptions about the way the universe works. So that's kind of a problem. The problem is known as the information paradox. And if scientists are going to find an answer to it, they'll have to unify their two theories, general relativity, the rules of the large, and quantum mechanics, the rules of the tiny. And so far, that's proved impossible. I think the single biggest embarrassment in physics is that we have these two theories, general relativity describing the big and quantum mechanics describing the small, that simply don't get along. Nature obviously knows what it's doing, but we just don't have a single unified explanation. The past few decades, as we've tried to describe black holes fully, the more work we've done, the more of a tangled mess we get. It will take at least one brilliant mind to figure this out. Maybe someone already has. The classical black hole has a shell-like event horizon beyond which nothing can escape. And according to the information paradox, information is lost when a black hole evaporates. But here's a radical, mind-bending idea. What if black holes have hair? What Hawking and his collaborators pointed out is that black holes can have soft hair. And if that's true, that would be the, a way of encapsulating all the information that went into the black hole. Scientists propose that these so-called hairs somehow store the information of whatever has fallen into the black hole. The information is then imprinted on the thermal radiation emitted as the black hole evaporates. These hairy black holes could solve the information paradox, but they're entirely theoretical. These are really new ideas and people are still trying to figure them out. So it's hard, it's hard to give a, a really good explanation of something that is, this is, uh, this, is, this is theory in the making. People are working this out now.